Hi, uh, today uh, we will start a, a new module called uh, dummy variables and uh, here is the content of this uh, module uh, dummy variables to separate blocks of data and uh, interaction terms involving uh, dummy variables. Okay, uh, let me uh, explain uh, what is the uh, objective of this uh, module. Uh, what happened in, in uh, regression analysis in most of the cases, uh, we use quanti uh, quantitative uh, variables and uh, these variables uh, have a uh, well defined uh, scale of measurement. For example, uh, the variables we considered here like uh, weight, age, height or uh, temperature, pressure or maybe uh, income, expenditure and all these things. But occasionally, uh, it is necessary to use some uh, qualitative uh, variable uh, like the variable like you know uh, employment status whether the ith person uh, is uh, employed or unemployed or uh, sex maybe whether uh, male or female it could be marital status also it could be origin also like whether uh, the observation is from uh, a city say from Calcutta or from Mumbai or from Delhi. So, uh, these are called sort of uh, uh, qualitative variable and the objective of this module is to uh, use how to incorporate this uh, qualitative information uh, in regression analysis. Uh, I mean, well, let me just uh, give uh, an example to uh, illustrate uh, the qualitative information uh, in the in the regression model. Let me consider uh, uh, Tarki data. Well, so here uh, this uh, the response variable y, uh, it uh, stands for the Tarki weights in pound and uh, the regressor variable x, uh, it stands for the Tarki uh, age in weeks, sorry. Uh, <coughs> well, and here you can see that uh, the first four observation are from a city uh, called Georgia and uh, the, sec uh, the next four observations are from Virginia and the last five observations are uh, from uh, Wisconsin and of course, I should mention that this, this data is from uh, a book called Applied Regression Analysis by Draper and Smith. Well, so what we want is that, so we have a response variable, we have a regressor variable, we want to fit uh, a relationship between uh, a straight line fit maybe for example, between y and x. So, what it says that we would like to relate y to x via a straight line, simple straight line model, but the different origin of the Tarki may cause a problem. Let me explain this part, you know, what is the problem here is that there might be <coughs> significant dif difference in response level. Uh, for different origin. 
and and that information i mean we need to incorporate that part i mean we can't if you, you well you can you can fit a uh, model for for this block fast and then you can fit a simple state line model for this block and finally another simple linear regression model for the last uh, uh, block but that we don't want i mean we want to fit a single uh, state a single model between between x and y and also uh, there will be some problem with that's i mean if you if you consider all the data together and fit a sing, uh, fit a uh, single model uh, there could be some problem we'll explain uh, explain that part so what we want is that we want to fit a single model and at the same time we want to incorporate uh, the qualitative information we have like you know they are from uh, three origins three different origins and there could be a significant difference in the response level so we need to incorporate that part so it's a nice idea here you know how to incorporate that uh, that information that you know they are from different origin and then we will fit a single model to uh, to to handle this situation okay so let me talk uh, about uh, the model we are going to fit. So, dummy variables to separate blocks of data. So, blocks means this could be uh, different origin this could be uh, for uh, uh, different uh, um, employment status one so one set of data for for employed person one set of data for uh, unemployed persons one set of data for male one set of data for female uh, this is what we mean by block and there could be you know uh, could be significant difference between the response level um, between say male and female. Okay. So, you have to incorporate that part also in the model by using uh, dummy variable. Okay. So, <coughs> suppose we wish to introduce into a model the idea that there are two types of machines say types A and B that produces different uh, level of levels of response in addition to the variation that occurs due to the other regressor. Okay. So, what I mean by this is that they are could be two blocks of data, one for machine uh, A and the another for, for machine B and, and 
there could be significant difference in their response level in addition to the variation due to the other regressor variables. So, how to incorporate the information that you know one set of data is from machine E, the production from a machine A, a and the other set of data is, uh, is, is production from, uh, from machine B. Okay. So, one way to do this is uh, one way to do this uh, is to add a dummy variable. say call it z. Okay. So, now we will introduce a model uh, involving a dummy variable. So, consider the simple model with uh, one regressor variable. x and one dummy variable say z and uh, I, I should mention that this dummy variable can take value either 0 or 1. Okay? So, here is the model uh, involving uh, one regressor variable and one dummy variable. So, the response y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x. This is a simple linear regression model involving one regressor and then I will add the diamond variable z here with the coefficient alpha plus epsilon. Okay, so, the model is uh, well, so let me write down the model again here. So, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus alpha z plus epsilon. So, this is the model. So, here z equal to 0 if the observation observation is from machine A and it is 1 if the observation is from machine B. Okay? Well, uh, so the model uh, for for block A data or machine A is uh, basically y equal to beta naught plus beta one x plus epsilon because for machine A it is z equal to zero and uh, for machine B the model is beta naught plus beta one x plus alpha plus epsilon. Okay. Well, but we are considering a single model to fit all the observations together. Well, I will explain it uh, again later on. Let uh, beta naught hat, beta 1 hat, alpha hat be lead square estimate of beta naught, beta 1 and alpha respectively. Then the fitted model is model is y hat equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x plus alpha hat z. Okay. So, now machine 
A data are estimated by by setting z equal to 0. So, the fitted model for the mach for machine A is basically y hat equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x and machine B data are estimated by setting z equal to 1. Okay. So, the fitted model for machine B is y hat equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x plus alpha sorry alpha hat. Okay, so, you can see that uh, the fitted model for machine A and the fitted model for machine B both are straight line and both of them are having the same slope beta 1 hat only. So, this is called the intercept only the difference is machine A has different intercept than machine B. So, here the intercept is beta naught hat whereas, for machine B the intercept is beta naught hat plus alpha hat. Okay. So, what this alpha hat does is that this alpha hat alpha hat simply estimates the difference in response level between between machine A and B. Okay. Well, now uh, let me uh, let explain. You know, this is a beautiful concept. Uh, you know, you need to think little bit to understand it more. Uh, now, let me explain the technical part like, uh, so you are given the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus alpha z plus epsilon and you need, I, I, I said that okay, let uh, beta naught hat and beta 1 hat and alpha hat are least square estimate of uh, these parameters. Now, I explain you know how to do it. Uh, so, once you add a new variable, it is uh, multiple linear regression model type of things. So, here you can write this as uh, y equal to x beta plus epsilon. So, here the x matrix x is equal to uh, what I will do is that I will uh, write uh, x naught here, I will write x naught here. So, x naught is uh, sort of 1 for all observations. Okay? So, there is no harm in putting x 1 here. So, this is the column corresponds to x 1 and they are all equal to 1. And here is the regressor variable x, uh, or there could be several regressors. So, uh, I, I should write other regressors, and uh, then z the dummy variable. So, the dummy variable uh, is, is 0 for for machine A. So, this part is for machine A. Suppose, there are n 1 observations 
and the dummy variable value z is equal to 1 for formation B. So, this is the x matrix, this is for machine B and suppose there are n 2 observations. So, this is what the x matrix is. So, you know what is x, uh, y is simply the uh, simply the uh, response uh, observations uh, of the response variable y 1, y 2 up to y n 1 plus n 2 I should write. And what is beta? Beta is a vector of course, beta is equal to beta naught, beta 1 and alpha. So, so this, uh, this can be written as a multiple linear regression model y equal to x beta plus epsilon, where x is this matrix, y is this matrix, this vector and beta is this vector of uh, regression coefficients. And you know uh, how to estimate beta for multiple linear regression model. So, beta hat is nothing but x prime x inverse x prime y. Okay, this is how we estimate uh, beta naught hat, beta 1 hat and alpha hat. So, here I want to say that you have two block of observation and uh, you need basically one dummy variable, but I said the dummy variable takes the value 0 and 1. Uh, I mean in that sense you can say this x naught is also a dummy variable because it always takes the uh, value 1. So, I will write that two sets of data or two blocks two blocks of data require two dummy variables including including x naught. I mean I am considering x naught is also a, a dummy variable. So, uh, so, for, uh, for for two sets of data, we need uh, two dummy variables, one is the one is z and the other dummy variable is x naught. Uh, so, here x naught is equal to 1 always and uh, z is equal to 0 for the first block or block A or machine A and z is equal to 1 for the second block or machine B. Well, now uh, suppose instead of uh, two sets of data, you have three sets of data like in, like in, the, in the example of Turkey data, uh, there are three sets of data. Well, so, how to uh, fit a single model for the Turkey data because there you have three sets of data. I mean in instead of three sets it could be uh, r any number of sets, uh, I mean any number of blocks say r blocks then how to handle, uh, how to fit a single uh, regression model involving dummy variable to, to incorporate the qualitative information that they are from different blocks. Okay, let me first talk about uh, three blocks and then you know we will talk about n blocks in, in general. So, here uh, let me talk about how to handle two blocks, sorry uh, I said right three blocks right, three blocks, two blocks we are done, three blocks. and uh, how many dummy variables? Let me say the three dummy variables, three 
dummy variables. So how to do with uh, uh, three dummy variables? I mean, three dummy variables means uh, two uh, two real dummy variables, say z1 and z2, and one dummy variable is of course that x0. Okay. So how to uh, incorporate the information that there are three sets of data, and that you have to incorporate using two dummy variables, z1 and z2. Okay, so you can't put, you know, um, z value is equal to zero, one, and two for three blocks. Not like that, because the dummy variable uh, takes the value uh, zero uh, and one. Okay, so here is the idea. You have two dummy variables. Say, I mean, we're going to use two dummy variables, z one and z two. So, z1 and z2 is equal to 1 0 for let me write machine machine a or you can say block a and this is equal to 0 1 for machine b and this is equal to 0 0 for machine C. Okay, so, uh, the model would be here, the model would be y equal to beta naught let me put x naught right now, x naught. So, beta naught plus beta x, which is the regressor variable plus alpha 1 z 1 plus alpha 2 z 2 plus epsilon. Okay. So, here uh, uh, we have you know we have three dummy variables specifically uh, including x naught, x naught, z 1 and z 2 and uh, let me explain uh, again that you know uh, similarly like previous case this can be also written as in matrix form y equal to um, x beta. x beta plus epsilon. Okay. So, where what is the x matrix here? So, x is equal to so for x naught, x naught is all equal to 1 and then other x's. I mean here instead of one regressor there could be several regressor it does not matter you just put the matrix here and then z1 z2 so z1 z2 z1 is 1 and z2 is 0 for the first block or for the machine 1 so suppose these are the data for uh, machine 1 and then for block 2, z 1 is equal to 0 and z 2 equal to 1. So, 0 1 0 1 sorry 0 1 0 1. So, this is for uh, for machine A, this is for machine B and for the block C, uh, z 1 is equal to 0 and z 2 is equal to 0. So, this is how you get the uh, you get the x matrix and this is for machine C. 
and you know what is this uh, y? Y is the vector of observations uh, response variable y1 up to let me write y n only and beta is equal to beta naught beta alpha 1 alpha 2. Okay, so, uh, you are all set to fit a uh, multiple linear regression model because you know what is x, you know what is beta, you know what is y, uh, everything is given here. So, you know the least square estimate beta hat is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y. So, you can compute beta naught hat, beta hat, alpha 1 hat and uh, alpha 2 hat by, by solving this one. Okay. So, suppose the fitted equation is the fitted equation is y hat plus sorry y hat equal to beta naught hat plus beta hat x plus alpha 1 hat z 1 plus alpha 2 hat z 2. Okay, so, so, so given three sets of data, we have fitted a simple uh, regression model and see for machine A or for block A, A data are estimated by by setting z 1 z 2 equal to 1 0 right. So, the fitted equation or yeah. So, fitted equation for block A is y hat is equal to beta naught hat plus beta hat x plus alpha 1 hat. Similarly, machine B data are estimated by setting z 1 z 2 equal to 0 1. So, y hat is equal to beta naught hat plus beta hat x plus alpha 2 hat and machine C data are estimated by setting z 1 z 2 equal to 0 0. So, y hat is equal to beta naught hat plus beta hat x. Well, so, uh, so we have three sets of data and what we are doing is that we are fitting a single linear regression model involving dummy variable uh, to all the data I mean uh, including block A, B and C and finally, you can see that there are three different fitted equation one for block 1 which is different from the fitted model for block 2 and which is again different from the fitted model for block 3. So, we get three different fitted equation 
uh, for three blocks uh, and they are having the same they are having the same uh, slope but different uh, intercept and i mean this is what we want i mean we want to fit a single model uh, involving all the data and we don't want to fit you know separate model for separate set of data okay uh, separate block separate blocks of data okay now this alpha 1 hat it estimate the difference in response level between c and a similarly the alpha 2 hat is i mean this estimates the difference in response level between b and c Okay, so let me write that alpha 1 hat estimates the difference in response level between A and C alpha 2 hat estimates the difference in response level between B and C and then how you estimate the difference in less response level between A and B. Okay, so, the difference between difference in response level between A and B can be estimated uh, by alpha 1 hat minus alpha 2 hat. So, alpha 1 hat minus alpha 2 hat uh, this estimates the difference in response level between between A and B. So, if, if this uh, this estimated value is is large then you can say that say alpha 1 hat is large then you can say that uh, there is a significant difference in the response level between a and c i mean again you know it's it's hard to say uh, what i mean by for large alpha hat so we we, we need to go for statistical test to test the significance of alpha 1 hat. So, so what we will do is that we will we'll test whether alpha 1 hat the null hypothesis is that whether alpha 1 hat is equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis that alpha 1 hat is uh, not equal to 0. So, if the null hypothesis is rejected that means the alternative hypothesis that alpha 1 hat is not equal to 0 is accepted that means there is a significant difference in response level between between a and c okay and uh, we know how to how to test that so it says that if uh, if desired t test can be performed to test the difference in response level between a and C sorry between A and C. So, we are formally going to test that whether uh, the null hypothesis H naught which is equal to alpha 1 equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis H 1 
which says that alpha 1 is not equal to 0. So, this alpha 1 is basically the difference in response level. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I hope that you understand what I mean by this uh, difference in response response level. So, if you uh, recall the uh, Tarki data example, so suppose one set of data is from uh, there we have one set of data from uh, Wisconsin and then uh, another set of data from Georgia and and the response is the turkey weight. Uh, so, the by this difference in response level between uh, turkey, I mean between say uh, Georgia and Wisconsin, what I mean by that is that whether there is a, a difference in turkey weight, significant difference in turkey weight, which are originated from uh, Georgia from from the turkey uh, which are originated from Wisconsin. So, that is what I mean the difference in uh, response level between two sets of data and for the darky data it is uh, it is their uh, weight whether the weights are significantly different uh, for two different origins. Okay. So, uh, to test this hypothesis, we know how to test this hypothesis. We we go for test uh, statistic. I am sure that you can uh, recall from my first module or second module, simple linear regression model or multiple linear mo regression model. The test statistic for testing this hypothesis is that t equal to alpha 1 hat. by x prime x inverse m s residual. Uh, okay. I mean here basically I am looking for the variance of alpha 1 hat and if you recall the uh, beta matrix there. So, this is beta naught, beta 1, alpha 1, alpha 2. So, in this matrix, uh, the third diagonal element is the variance of alpha 1. So, this is I will put 3 3. 3 3 means it is a uh, third uh, sup suppose this is this is the variance covariance matrix for beta and then here you have the data the diagonal elements. So, this element is the variance of so, this quantity is the variance of uh, alpha 1 hat. So, I denote it by 3 3 and, and the critical region critical region is, is that you, you reject this null hypothesis if this t is significantly large. Large means it the modulus value of this t is greater than uh, t tabulated value alpha by 2 at the alpha level of significance and and the degree of freedom is uh, residual residual degree of freedom okay I, I hope that you can under you you remember all these things uh, this is how we test uh, alpha 1 so that this is what we are testing whether there is, there is significant difference in response level between a and c and similarly we can test for h naught alpha 2 equal to 0 against h 1 alpha 2 not equal to 0 and uh, and this one is uh, this one stands for difference in response level between between uh, B and B and C. So, to check whether there is a significant difference between in, in response level between the data from B and from the data in C. 
Okay, so the same uh, test statistics. So T is equal to T is equal to alpha two hat by uh, x prime x inverse m s residual, and this is the fourth uh, parameter uh, or coefficient regression coefficient. So the variance of alpha two hat is basically uh, this uh, the fourth fourth. Uh, the element at at the position four, four that fourth diagonal elements, um, and here is the t statistics. And similarly, the critical region is same. Critical region is t greater than t alpha by two, and uh, residual degree of freedom for this uh, t distribution. And uh, so we are left with how to check uh, the difference between uh, difference in response response level between uh, A and uh, B. So I told before that uh, uh, alpha one hat minus alpha two hat estimates the difference in response level between uh, A and B. Uh, so what we'll do here we'll check. Uh, we will check H naught uh, whether alpha 1 minus alpha 2 is equal to 0. So, this is the uh, difference in response level between A and B. So, if this is accepted that means, there is no difference in significant difference in response level between A and B uh, against the alternative hypothesis H 1 which is uh, alpha 1 minus alpha 2 is not equal to 0. Okay. So, here also you will use T statistics that is equal to T 1 hat minus T 2 hat by uh, variance of sorry uh, what I am doing uh, t equal to alpha 1 hat minus alpha 2 hat by variance of alpha 1 hat minus alpha 2 hat square root. And uh, this quantity you can compute because variance of alpha 1 hat minus alpha 2 hat is equal to variance of alpha 1 hat. So, you know how to compute it plus variance of alpha 2 hat minus twice covariance of alpha 1 hat alpha 2 hat. So, if I write down the variance covariance matrix of beta, uh, you know uh, so this variance of alpha 1 hat is this element variance of alpha 2 hat is this element and the covariance between alpha 1 and alpha 2 hat is this one. Yeah, I think so. So, you can compute this you know once you because you know this one and then uh, it is same uh, you know this follows uh, the critical region is critical region is that uh, modulus of t is greater than t alpha by 2 um, residual degree of freedom. So, if if this t is observed t is greater than the tabulated t you reject the null hypothesis and you can say that there is a significance difference between uh, between, le between uh, response level of A and, uh, and B. Well, uh, still you know uh, I hope that everything is clear, but uh, but uh, I would like to uh, illustrate the same thing for the target data. So, we have this data I explained that this is the edge in weeks and these are the weights uh, in pounds and these are the origin different origin. And what you can do is that Suppose, uh, you do not know the dummy <coughs> variable technique, 
and you want to find the relationship between x and y. So, you first uh, regress <coughs> sorry first regress y against uh, x and uh, <coughs> here is the fitted model. Okay. Now, what you do is that once you have the fitted model ignoring the dummy variable, you compute the residuals. So, you can see uh, there is something uh, wrong with this residual, I mean wrong in the sense that for this block of data the residuals are all negative and uh, for this block of data the residuals are again all negative and perhaps you know these are smaller than uh, overall compared to this and for the last block they are all positive. So, this sort of indicates uh, there is a, uh, a significant difference in the response level uh, between uh, these three sets of data. So, that implies that you need to consider uh, a dummy variable say uh, z 1 and z 2 and feed the model. Okay. So, uh, considering the dummy variable z 1 and z 2 here is the model I explained uh, just now and uh, to clear any sort of doubt you know I just wrote down the x matrix. So, here you see the x matrix this one is for the dummy variable x naught I mean, which is always equal to 1 and here you have only one regressor. So, you put the data here for the corresponds to x only. So, if you have x 1 x 2 you put x 1 x 2 here and you have the dummy variable z 1 and z 2. So, for, for, for the first block it is all 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 for the second block it is 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 and for the last block it is all 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0. So, here is the x matrix. So, you know what is x matrix and here is the y vector uh, observations on response variable is same as this one and you have four parameters here beta naught, beta 1, alpha 1, alpha 2. So, uh, you are uh, all set uh, with uh, to fit a um, multiple linear regression model uh, y equal to x beta plus epsilon. So, here you do all this calculation here is the uh, est estimated is uh, estimated parameters. Now, you see so the fitted equation is this one this one this is beta naught this is beta 1 alpha 1 alpha 2. So, this is your fitted equation as I told that you know alpha 1 uh, estimates difference in response level between g and uh, w that is block a and block uh, c perhaps and alpha 2 hat estimate the difference in response level between v and w that is b and c and alpha 1 hat minus alpha 2 hat that uh, is equal to z, uh, 0 0.27 that estimate difference in response level between uh, g and v. So, you can uh, see looking at this data you cannot say whether this uh, this quantity or this uh, alpha 1 modulus value is significantly big or not. So, you have to go for uh, formal uh, test. Uh, so, uh, you test for alpha 1 equal to 0 against uh, h 1 that alpha 1 is not equal to 0. So, you go for the t statistics and uh, here is the t value and uh, the degree of freedom is 9 here. Uh, I hope you know you can recall why it is 9 because uh, uh, there are uh, because there are uh, 13 observations total and uh, and since 
So, 13 observations mean 13 residuals are there and since there are 4 uh, regression coefficients, uh, there will be uh, 4 constraint on the residual. So, you cannot choose all the residuals independently, um, there are some restrictions, there are 4 restrictions. So, you can choose, uh, you have the freedom of choosing 9 residuals uh, and then uh, the remaining 4 uh, have to be chosen in such a way that uh, uh, all these uh, 4 restrictions are satisfied. So, that is why the degree of freedom is 9 and the table tabulated value is this much which is, is much smaller than this uh, observed value. So, uh, this conclude that alpha 1 uh, is equal to 0 is rejected that means, this is accepted which means there is a significant uh, difference in response level between uh, uh, between the Turkey uh, from uh, Georgia and uh, uh, Wisconsin. Similarly, you test for alpha 2 and uh, to test the difference between uh, this V and W and, uh, and this test will give you uh, the difference in response level between uh, G and V. And uh, here you can, you can see that uh, uh, basically you know if you put, uh, so this is the fitted model and if you put Z 1, Z 2 equal to 0 1, here is the fitted uh, model for Georgia. If you put 0 1 in this model, uh, you get uh, this is for Virginia and this is for if you put 0 0 here, you get this model for Wisconsin and you plot them. So, you are getting ultimately you are getting 3 different uh, um, um, fits and they are parallel, but they, they have different uh, intersects and uh, if you see them carefully, you can, you can identify you know uh, the difference in response level between, uh, between uh, the uh, Turkey originated from 3 different origins. So, we have to stop now. Uh, thank you for your attention.